Yes, and Glenn Seaton has pole position by virtue of his tremendous win in that second race from John Bauer. Larry Perkins on the second row with Dick Johnson. Row number three, Russell Ingle, Peter Brock. Row four, Mark Scaife, Wayne Gardner, the Yokohama boys. And row number five is John Faulkner alongside Tony Longhurst. Row six, Stephen Richards, Terry Finnegan, who's had a great day in the Sony Auto Sound car. Greg Crick, Darren Hossack next, then Mark Larkham, Trevor Ashby. And row number nine is Kevin Heffern and John Cotter. Row number 10, Neil Shrembury and Wayne Russell. And Alan Jones, Bob Pearson are next as the green flag goes up and we're set for a start. Getting ready, race three, the third and final race of the day. Round six here at Eastern Creek. Can Seaton make it a clean sweep? Perkins went to, uh, he moved too early and uh, realised he was going to be penalised and stopped. So, uh... Oh, look at this, there's a big rub into turn one and it was Murphy down the inside, I think. Hard to call from this uh, viewpoint, but that was real close through the first turn. We go on board with Dick Johnson in the Shell Helix Falcon. John Bauer's got a great, a great start. This looks like we're on board with Greg Murphy. He is right up the back of Dick Johnson. Now he's on the inside. Look at this. Murphy's making an inside charge on Johnson. Fantastic stuff. Well, it looks like we've lost, is it Larkham or Jones? It's Mark Larkham in the minor 10 Falcon. And Scape has got some battle damage on board there as well. That was a frantic start. It all was triggered by the fact that Larry Perkins got a shocker. And then that mixed the grid up. Everybody was getting stuck into everybody else in the first turn. And the same drama continued down to turn two. One of the Castrol cars with the front Whoa. guard rubbing. And it's Russell Ingle. Is it? Yes, yes, indeed it is, it is yes. yes. And the front right's making contact there with the guard. The rest of them are blinded by it. So Russell in strife here, and that's not good for his championship aspirations. Down into turn nine, it'll be hard there with the uh, smoke bellowing and the sun in your eyes. Gone, Gordon has right. gone. So he's managed just to hang on to it, keep it on the black stuff, and he keeps on going, but he's lost quite a few positions. Look at the smoke coming from Russell Ingalls' right front tyre as he comes up the back section of the circuit. How long do you reckon this will last, Neil? Hard to tell, really, Lee. It depends on what's making contact with what. I suspect it's the back of the front splitter that's actually rubbing on the tyre, in which case it may rub itself back out of shape again and be OK. But uh, let's hope he's not going to be penalised. Scape, meanwhile, has also come to pit lane. There he is. And he was involved, obviously, in some contact. Bit of damage on the left rear. Another thing that's not so good for Russell Engel is the fact he's uh, under a $2,500 uh, suspended sentence, uh, meaning to say that if he gets involved in um, a thing again like he did with Gardner, then it'll cost him yeah. two and a half grand. Yeah, and that was as a result of the love bite with uh, Wayne Gardner <laughs> in that first race. So this is John Bow, knows his way around this circuit very well, done it. A little bit of testing here. He's very good at looking after the rear tyres on this track, and we've always watched John here because he's a fierce competitor and knows how to set the car up right to get a good, strong result. And it, there's the windscreen though. Brian profile for John Bow. First in the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship in 95. Two times Bathurst winner. First in the Gold Star in 84 and 85. And also a winner here at Eastern Creek in the 12 hour. Now so far this year, there is his uh, placings. He has been the king of consistency. Sixth, third, second, a fifth and a fourth. So he's got everything bar a win. So uh, it's, it won't come today, but uh, there's plenty of rounds left to go for John Bow. He won here at Eastern Creek in the Ford Sierra in 1992, and he won the first race here last year at the opening round of last year's championship. So he may get another win on the board, but Seaton's car is set up beautifully today. He's had two wins. He's coming from behind. Let's see what the Ford credit racing team has up its sleeve. Yeah, on the subject of Bow, he's also got a very, very wide uh, Falcon when he's in front of the Neil. Harder to pass than a kidney stone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we then no, go John's back. very good. He's, uh, he's a very tough professional racer, and John's attitude is probably the right one, and it's if they're good enough, they find a way round. He'll hold his ground and fight to the last. He's making good lap speed at the moment. His last lap was a 132.9. That's very, very quick at this late stage of the day. Six tenths of a, qu a second quicker than Glenn Seaton, who is still lurking about three or four car lengths back. There's no pressure on Seaton. Uh, if Bow wins this one, he only has to finish fourth to still take the round. So he's sitting comfortable where he is. But Seaton won't be satisfied with that as he starts to close the gap now on John Bow. He wants to make this three from three and repeat his sand down performance as we go on board. The Ford Credit Falcon with Glenn Seaton. Here he comes, closing right up under brakes. Did you hear the little lock of the yeah. brake going over the ripple strip there? The unweighted side of the corner. Very easy to use, a little too much brake pressure, just momentarily stops the tyre. The danger for the driver is putting a big flat spot on the tyre, but Glenn will have a good sense of feel with his car and his brakes and his tyres. Oh, Bowers run extremely wide on the approach to turn nine, the hairpin. Glenn's getting a good 
tractable smooth run out of the turn had a bit of a look down I guess he's glancing at maybe his sway bar positions the guys can control their anti roll bars from within the cockpit in order to trim the car's balance he may be looking to perhaps get rid of some understeer get rid of some oversteer whatever but he's fixated on the back of John Bow's car at the moment you saw John looking to use every last millimeter of road Glenn just looking for some fresh air there into the front of the car as they head down to turn one lap four of 12. yeah I'm surprised that uh, Murphy's not given him more of a hurry up because when you bear in mind that Murphy's tires are in better nick than anybody's by virtue of the fact he didn't get in uh, didn't start in the first race so oh now there you go well, that last Murphy. lap uh, Baz he did the he did the quickest a 132.4 out of the top three so he's starting to uh, lift the tempo a little bit as Seaton is caught in the middle he's trying to give John Bow the hurry up and Bow's looking in his mirror watching how close Seaton's getting seen a lot of good duels between these two drivers over the years they've inevitably been locked together in some tremendous Ford versus Ford battles but inevitably on different rubber in recent years Glenn has been mostly on Bridgestone he did have a run there a few years back with Yokohama and with Dunlop and uh, John Bauer's been on Dunlop now for well as long as I can remember but inevitably these two cars end up being uh, locked together in battle incidentally Greg Murphy has just recorded a new lap record at a time of 132.4 that's very very quick and Glenn just starting to get ever so closer to the back of John and I think the strength of his car here will be the way in which it puts its power down out of some of these corners he's just getting a little closer plenty of time left to run Glenn Seaton sitting in a very handy position Murphy a couple of car lengths off but still well in touch and our high camera shot there just quickly showed you uh, the break back to Dick Johnson watch the bottom of your screen there's Johnson coming through now so this leading trio here comes Seaton pulling out of the draft he's a little far back though to make this inside move so he pulls back in behind John Bow. maybe next time round one of the things that's awkward here at Eastern Creek guys at this stage of the day you see how much light is in their eyes yeah. the, the uh, western horizon the sun is right in their eyes for the braking area which is about 100 meters from the corner you're doing 260 k's it's a place where it's handy to see yeah absolutely mark, mark osler what do you have for us it's just interesting this channel tires the durability of the dunlop this late in the day normally it's the bridgestone that uh, is the top tire of this situation i was talking to jeff moorhead from dunlop he said this is their medium compound tire which is performing particularly well on tracks that have been recently resurfaced that includes eastern creek and guess what in three weeks time lakeside raceway these guys are got big smiles on their faces at the moment and while the sun is shining here at the moment mark it is cooler than it was for the first two races and i know in my experience with the dunlops they definitely like a cooler ambient temperature and they've got that at the moment and this tremendous shot on board with glenn seaton will show us just whether or not john's car is wriggling around in the rear end as they come through this fast left hand fourth gear sweeper around the back of uh, what they call corporate hill here at eastern creek well, someone who has just been on fire at the moment is Alan Jones. He's gone extremely well from the back of the pack up to eighth position as we have a look at Peter Brock and Russell Ingle. Now, guys, that smoke that uh, was coming from the front uh, right-hand side seems to have uh, disappeared. Yeah, it's rubbed itself back into uh, some degree of normalcy, so it's not, not been a big driver. It may have been a little guard just folded down on the tyre or the uh, front split has just been pushed back onto the tyre a bit, but it's rubbed itself back yeah. in shape just have to hope that it hasn't worn through the sidewall of the tyre, don't you? And see uh, Russell that time grabbing the rear vision mirror just to find out where that menacing 05 car was, but the good news is for Russell, he's a couple of car lengths back and not threatening at this stage. And have a look right behind Peter Brock, sitting back there in seventh position, there's Russell Ingall speed 251, is Stephen Richards. That is so pleasing to see as we go on board the Ford Credit Falcon with Glenn Seaton. He's menacing the back of John Bow, just hounding him. Notice that when we listen to Glenn Seaton with Greg Murphy really hounding him at the moment, he short shifted. He came out of the corner in second, and there's Greg Murphy's viewpoint. Wow, this is tight, close motor racing. Yeah, Glenn short shifted. He punched it out of there in second, grabbed third, but really only used it to transit the car, then quickly put it into fourth gear and eased the car. Tried to keep its chassis speed up, but he did, he did not want to excite the rear tyres with too much horsepower at turn four. That's one of the techniques that you have to use around this track so that you don't end up with a car that burns up its rear yeah. tyres. I like that. Excite the tyres, Neil. That's a like that. <laughs> you ever done any of that? Yeah, absolutely. There was your Shell Helix race score, and something that we didn't quite see on there was Wayne Gardner is way back in 17th position as Murphy gets out on the dirt. Gets a little bit loose on the exit of that corner. He's caught a little bit up on Glenn Seaton, though, and this bunch is closer now. A bit of motocross might have helped here. He had the tail hanging right out like a sprint car driver. Then he's definitely in touch with this battle. It's a good performance from Greg. Mentioned before, got the lap record. Let's go on board now with Greg Murphy. We'll see how hard he's working. Up to fifth gear. 
It's a Hollinger six-speed, what's called a dog box in these cars. No synchromesh like your road car. 260 kilometres an hour hard on the brakes, down to fifth gear. Balance the car on the throttle. You can't pick the throttle up too early on this circuit. You'll run wide at that ripple strip on the right and punch a big hole in the concrete wall. Not a good look. <laughs> hard on the brakes again. Down to second gear now, around about 80 kilometres an hour. Can't afford to pick the throttle up too early. Let's see if he short shifts. Yes, he does. Second to third to fourth. Great shot as we see John Bow in the lead, just barely from Glenn Seaton. Greg Murphy tucked in behind. Well, this would be a big confidence boost for John Bow and the entire Shell Helix team. They're running extremely well today. Went over and spoke to the guys a short time ago, and there were smiles all round the Shell pit. And there hasn't been too many smiles this year. Although John Bow has been running consistently in third position in the championship. Here's the Shell Helix race score. Bow's in front. Seaton Murphy, as we know. Johnson and Russell Ingle sitting in fifth position. We go back. It's Brock. Stephen Richards, as I said, he's going very well. We've got five laps left to run in this one. Can John Bow hang on to it? Five laps to run. Five laps to run, and Murphy's just put in the quickest lap again. But having said that, it looks like he's dropped back, so I don't understand that one. Glenn Seaton would be a little bit disappointed if he can't get the perfect score three from three today. He is trying his absolute best. Neil Crompton, do you reckon he can do it? I think uh, if I were Glenn, I would want to win the race, but not at all costs. Yet, yeah, I know it's early, but he's got to think championship and he's got to think in terms of the round win today and he knows John, he's raced against him a lot he knows that John wants to win and he's going to be difficult to pass if the situation presented itself, hey you jam yourself in and go for it but there's no way I want to tear my car up to make a silly point and potentially uh, end up in the paddock with no points Well he's got an unbelievable record here at Eastern Creek Glen Seaton since 1992 including Winfield Triple Challenge meetings and Shell Australian Touring Car meetings as oh, Murphy's uh... gone! We've lost our third place driver, Greg Murphy, in the mobile car. It's been another disastrous round for the young Kiwi. We didn't quite pick up what happened, but he is off the circuit. And that's the braking area into turn two, which is after the very fast uh, 260 kilometre an hour first turn. What's he done here? Well, that's spun an unusual way. It's spun to the right. Why? I don't know. Did it lock the rear brakes? Didn't venture too far off the circuit didn't find himself into the kitty litter but whatever the outcome is that Greg Murphy appears to be getting out of the car not only appears to be he's out of the car so he's not going to be a happy boy back to our leading pair Bow and Seaton really starting to put the pressure on there is a very dejected Greg Murphy as I was saying about Seaton earlier on his impeccable record here from 23 races since 1992 including both of those series Seaton has won 11 not including this one so he has uh, really had a great time here at Eastern Creek let's see if he can make it a perfect day today John Bow is standing in his way Glenn is really squeezing now. He's trying to close the gap. He may be in slightly better tyre shape than John. You can see John periodically glancing in the rear view mirrors. And I guess what Glenn's attempting to try and do now, apart from drive his car as hard as he can, is to push John into a mistake. And that's a difficult thing to do because John is a very calm, quiet, sensible driver who really executes his craft very well. Well, it'll be a nice day for um, Dick Johnson Racing because if they get if they get to JB and DJ up on the uh, podium, it makes a nice change. There's the windscreens, O'Brien profile for Glenn Seaton and Ford Credit Racing. It's a first in the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship 93, second two years. First at Sandown twice, also the Australian Giro Champion. This year you've seen what a great year he's been having. A first at Sandown, a second at Calder, two thirds, Simmons and Winton, and a fifth at Phillip Island as he starts to make an outside move on Bow. We go on board with Glenn Seaton now. Time is running out. Three laps to go. It's interesting, you know, when you look at these two cars, built and engineered by completely different groups of people on different tyres, drivers with different techniques, and on their last lap, they were a couple of hundredths a second apart, and you, you cannot believe they could end up being that close. And oh! Cito trying hard, of course. One of the great disappointments in Glenn's racing career so far has been the, the lack of opportunity to get into the position to win the race at Bathurst. The Australian 1000 Classic would make so much of a difference to Glenn's peace of mind, and he's got great form this year. Can he win in 97? Well, it was interesting on that last corner there, Neil, when... Uh they came around and the flag marshal put the blue flag out to John Bow. I, I think, think Bow would yeah. have been saying, put that away, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, geez, there's someone trying to pass me. <laughs> Thanks for that. 
over the back oh, line. do a great job here. We should give them a plug. They work very hard. They keep the drivers informed. It's amazing how much information you get from the flaggies. Uh, they help paint a picture in your mind of what's going on around you. And uh, even though it may seem a little unusual, they need to know. Look at this. Cito is jammed under the back of that uh, Ford Falcon. I reckon you can read the part number on John's diff. This is good, close V8 supercar racing. It's the third and final race. We've literally only got two and a bit laps left to run in this one. And John Bauer is standing in the way of Glenn Seaton's perfect score here today. They come onto the main straight when they cross the start finish line. There will be two full laps left to run. Can Seaton do anything about the Shell Helix Falcon of John Bauer? I can't see Seaton risking it. You know, it's as uh, Neil was saying, I mean, it's nonsense, you know, that uh, Ingall's down in fourth place. He's the guy that um, Seaton's worried about at the moment. And uh, to risk anything would be foolish, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think... Oh, oh, yeah. oh and it said that! <laughs> oh, crash clunk. Whoops, and John's taken to the paddock. Well, hey, yeah. timing is everything. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Well, Cito's done the job. He squeezed through. That was remarkable. I wouldn't have said not half a second prior to that, like my colleague here, that he could possibly get away with it. But John just managed to understeer very slightly wide. There's a tiny little bit of panic, panel damage on the car. Uh, and he's done the business. That is amazing. That car has got some mid-corner grip. I'm so surprised he had a good of knowing what John's like. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, John just uh, momentarily left a little gap. It was an interesting approach from Glenn. He didn't go for the dart down the inside like everybody tends to want to do here. He stayed high on the racing line and, and then, then tried to carry some in, speed yeah. in, and it worked for him. There's the scars, a few of them on both sides of the Ford Credit Falcon. But this has been a remarkable performance from Glenn today, and let's have a look at a replay and just uh, analyse exactly what's going on here. Here he is. Down the inside of John Bow. Bang, cop that for your trouble, John. And a little bit more, another rub. Look at these two guys working pretty hard. Glenn Chewin on the plastic hose, I would be too. And there's one for your corner just to finish the job. And John ends up in the paddock. That's pretty hard motor racing, but it was fair. He, he made it down the inside and there's now just one lap to go. It's 3.9 kilometres before Glenn Seaton takes the hat trick. So he is on his way home and uh, he's pulled out enough of a gap. I'd say to make life, well, there it is, to well, make life very difficult I for mean, John if you, Bow. If you're John Bow now, you say, well, that's that. Dick Johnson sitting there in third, that's great. Then we go back to Russell Engel, we pick up Peter Brock, Stephen Richards and Larry Perkins. Perkins has oh, it! Right. Oh, Larry and oh, Stephen's gone Stephen. too! So, whether they can regain, they're going to lose a couple of positions. Larry's in the kitty litter here. <laughs> Stephen Richards. Oh, he's managed to get it out too. And they're going to resume the battle. There's still only three car lengths apart after all that. Larry won't be happy. Stephen's a hard little racer. Here's a replay of what happened here. Larry's made a lunge underneath, probably locked the rear brakes a little bit as, of course, uh, Stephen moves to the left as well. So Larry's trying to not only stop the car, but turn it. It didn't want to know about it, and they've both had a half lose. So some bad luck there for Stevie Richards as this guy, Glenn Seaton in the Ford Credit Falcon, comes into turn nine. He's only got a couple of corners left to negotiate and it is going to be another great day to remember in his V8 supercar career. He did this at Sandown earlier in the year and he's going to do it again. Three starts, three wins. And Glenn's crew will be very happy about this. They've taken a little bit of pressure off themselves now this weekend. A good weekend like this with three solid results and a big bag full of points just gives you the good impetus to go to the next round and feel confident. Down the main straight, it is that score. Three from three yet again for the Ford Credit Falcon of Glenn Seaton and his team. Congratulations to them. Some good hard driving, a fantastic result for them and a great result for the Shell Helix team as well. John Bow in for second and Dick Johnson in for third. Now let's see if he gives us a thumbs up. He's looking a little more serious than what he usually does. And Larry Perkins' car has caught fire by the looks of it. Well, that's an unusual occurrence. Larry's out at the front of the car and he's safe. He's OK. That's good news. And that's probably as a result of the off. It may have pulled a line off the car somewhere. Or Let's have a look at this and just see what happened. Whoa, this is a weird one. Huge amount of smoke, smoke coming out of the right-hand side of the car. Got no idea what that's all about, guys. I, I assume it's some sort of a line has come off underneath the car or the side of the car as a result of the off. You see the flame yeah, just yeah. You could see Larry open the door before he got to the got off the circuit. <laughs> a bit so of extra how do you like your Perkins done? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there he is, the happy man. Glenn Seaton still chewing frantically on that drink straw.
Larry uh, probably had the op option then of uh, using his onboard fire extinguisher system, which all of these cars have, but he very wisely took the car to where the marshals were, and they quickly arrested the problem. So it's very clever thinking on Larry's part and great marshalling to help get that fire out because you've got nearly 300,000 bucks worth of race car there, and the last thing you want to do is damage it unnecessarily. So that was Glenn Seaton's eighth win in this year's Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. On board with Dick Johnson. He would be chuffed at the moment. He would be very happy. There we go, the <laughs> thumbs up. He's extremely happy. That is the best result by far in this year's Shell Australian Touring Car Championship for the Shell team. Some hard racing for Dick Johnson today. Here's the final placings on the Shell Helix race score for you. Of course, Seaton. In for the win ahead of John Bow and Dick Johnson. Russell Ingle managed to pick up fourth place and some valuable championship points. Peter Brock remained in fifth. Six back through ten. Terry Finnegan, what an outstanding round for him in the Sony Commodore. Longhurst up into seventh. John Faulkner eighth. Stevie Richards managed ninth. And Trevor Ashby in for tenth position. There's eleventh back through fifteen with you.